let me bless your hand before we go on. Father, we thank you for tonight. All these your children, our ministers, our members, our invitees, everyone here tonight, anoint their hand with your power in Jesus' name. That as the hand will touch themselves, anointing that breaks every yoke will flow to everyone in Jesus' name. As their hands will write, their hands will hold anything, their hands will be laid on anything, new life, abundant life, supernatural life will come on all those things in Jesus' name. Every weakness taken away, every battle won tonight, every sickness totally healed, and you make your people to become conquerors tonight in Jesus' name. Wipe all the tears away. Take all the sorrow away. Do something that your people will rise up in new life and move on to the future in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 30. Hebrews 11, verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. After they were compassed about seven days. By faith, that faith is here tonight. Every wall standing between you and your possession, that wall will be broken down today. The wall that stands between you and your blessing, that wall of demarcation is coming down today. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. For them, the children of Israel, it was a great, great day, a day never to be forgotten. And for us here today, for me, I said for me, and for you, this is a great day. It's a day of victory. It's a day of power. It's a day of conquest. A day for zeros to become heroes. Today, every subtraction in your life will turn to addition. Everything, they used to divide it before they give it to you. Divide it before they give it to you. Multiplication will replace that. Today is a day, the day for captives to become conquerors. And the day for the oppressed to become overcomers. You will walk on the storms of your life. All the problems of your life, congratulations. Today, there's going to be a change. There is a turning around tonight in Jesus' name. This is the day for the sick to become sound and strong. Before we go on, let the sick say, You are well. You are healed. You are delivered. Yeah. Weakness is gone. Yeah. What's the person I'm talking about? Let the weak say, I am, I am strong. Because today, this night, there will be a song in your mouth. Yeah. It's a day for victims to become victors. It's the day for the poor, the defeated, the weak, the failing, conquered slaves to become strong, become triumphant, become uplifted, become successful achievers. 
As you look at the children of Israel, let, let me show you the story. We're looking at Joshua chapter 6. In Joshua chapter 6, I'm reading here from verse 1. These children of Israel, you know the story already. They were coming out of the wilderness. And then they had passed through the Jordan River. As they passed over, passed through the Jordan River, Jordan has closed up. And so they were between Jordan and Jericho. They couldn't go back because the water had already come back. And it was overflowing all its banks. They couldn't go forward because Jericho was ahead of them. And the walls were thick. The walls were strong. The walls were firm. The walls were deep. The walls were high. Think about that. To go back, impossible. To go forward, impossible. And so Jericho before them and Jordan behind them. It was an impenetrable situation. They were either in the gulf of defeat or they will be at the gate of dominion. Faith turned everything around. And tonight, I said tonight, faith in God will turn everything around in your life. It was faith that won the victory. And today, supernatural conquest is coming upon your life. And look at this, look at this. Joshua chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 1. It says, now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into, the, into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war. Go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, verse 4, and seven priests shall bear the ark, seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Verse 5, and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. That when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. The wall hindering you shall fall down flat. The wall of demarcation between you and your healing tonight will fall down flat. And the wall of demarcation separation between you and success, between you and achievement, between you and possession, between you and your destiny, that wall will fall down tonight in Jesus' name. It says, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up, every man. How many people? Every man. My name is there. And every man. Is your name here? Are you a receiver tonight? Are you an achiever tonight? Are you blessed tonight? Look at your name there. Look at your name there. And the people shall ascend up, every man stretch before him. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, And Joshua and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then 
ye shall shout. Look at verse 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. There's going to be shouting tonight. Shout of joy. Shout of testimony. Shout of celebration. Shout of power. Shout of conquest. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Look at verse 20. So, the people shouted, I will shout. I said, I will shout. That voice will come back. That stress will come back. That excitement will come back. That zeal will come back. Everything you have lost. I said everything you have lost. I said everything you have lost. As the Jericho walls will fall down tonight, you will shout. You will sing. You will celebrate. You will rejoice. Verse 20, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass, always it will come to pass. The promise of God, I said it will come to pass. The defeat of your enemy, I said it will come to pass. The healing of your body, I said it will come to pass. The joy of the Lord, I said it will come to pass. The answer to your prayer, it will come to pass. It says, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that, that my walls fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. How many people? I said that many of us here tonight. Every man straight before him and he took the city. You will take it tonight. Tonight, before we pray, I'm speaking to you on an unforgettable day of supernatural conquest. An unforgettable day that brain tumor will vanish away. That seed that is packed inside your tummy, they call fibroid, tonight, tonight, that seed will melt away. And all those problems, all those problems, they are crumbling, they are coming down tonight in Jesus' name. An unforgettable day of supernatural conquest. Three things we're looking at, very simple. Number one, the promise of supernatural conquest is promised. The promise of supernatural conquest. Point number two, the power of speech control. The power of speech control. You see what the Lord told them? He told them, if you're going to bring those Jericho walls down, control your speech. Don't talk. Don't make any noise until the day and until the time and the moment that I ask you to shout, then you know your hallelujah chorus has begun in heaven. It's going to be registered in your heart. But they needed to control their speech, the power of speech control. Point number three, the praise of shouting conquerors. The praise of shouting conquerors. I will praise the Lord. I will exalt the Lord. I have a testimony. You will have a testimony. Point number one, the promise of supernatural conquest. Come back to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. Now Jericho was lately shut up. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. But look at verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, 
See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. See what the Lord has said here. He said, Joshua, see. What was he looking at? He could see the walls still standing. And the Lord said, see. He could see that nobody could come out, nobody could get in. And God said, see, I have given those three words. The Almighty God said, although the walls are still standing, I have given. The Almighty God said, although the doors are all shut, and it's like you cannot possess, I have given. And the Lord said, see, you are to see with your eyes of faith. And tonight, it's not the world standing. You cannot, you don't see that anymore. That thing is coming down. It's not the pain in your body. That, one, that thing is going. It's not the swelling in your body. That one is going. It's not the medical report and the x-ray you carry, that one. We're going to forget about that one. See, you will see. You will see a miracle. And you will see the answer to prayer tonight. You will see the supernatural power of the Almighty God tonight in your life, in your body, in your family, in that child, in Jesus' name. See, I have given into thy hand Jericho. Look at that promise. The promise is sure. I have given. It was settled with Abraham. That's what you need to understand. It's not something of today. This thing has been said to long, long ago. See, I have given. I want you to look at uh, Genesis. Look at Genesis chapter 15. I have given. It was settled at that time. And God was just saying, Joshua, before you were born, that thing was settled. And before you became a leader, that thing was settled. And before you came to this point, and before you came today, that thing has been settled. Your salvation has been settled. Long ago at Calvary, your healing has been settled. Long ago at the weeping post, your deliverance has been settled long ago. When Jesus broke the hedge of Satan, the hedge of the devil, your possession, your prosperity, everything has been settled long ago. And Joshua was to know to understand. See, Joshua, I have given. Let's come to Genesis chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 15, verse 6. And he, be and he believed in the Lord and he counted he to him for righteousness. Look at verse 7. And he said unto him, I am the God, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the earth of the Chaldees to give thee this land and to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon, pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and he divided them in the midst, and he laid each piece one against another. But the birds he divided not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. He had the sacrifice had been offered. And when some fowls came to defile and to take away the sacrifice, Abraham drove them away. And now look at verse 18. In verse 18, here you find where it was settled. In the same day, the Lord made the covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. That's when it was settled. That's when it was settled. It's not, you know, the people of Jericho, that's nothing. 
all the walls, that's nothing. And even whatever fear may be in the heart of any of the children of Israel, all that was nothing. It was settled with Abraham. I have given from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Not only that, this that we're talking about had also been sealed in heaven. Because it was confirmed unto Moses. This same promise, behold, see, I have given. Look at this. I'm reading to you from Numbers. Numbers chapter 33. I have given. Your blessing is sure tonight. Your deliverance is secure tonight. Because it's been settled. It's been given. And it says in Numbers chapter 33, I'm reading here from verse 53. Verse 53. And ye shall possess the inhabitants of the land. Ye shall dispossess, dispossess the inhabitants of the land and shall dwell therein. For, tell me, I have given you the land to possess it. You know, it's not something of today. It's not like, maybe it will be done, maybe it will not be done. The thing was very sure because it was first of all settled with Abraham. And then it was confirmed to Moses. And eventually it was sealed in heaven. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 24. Rise ye up. Take your journey. Pass over the river Anon. Behold, tell me there. Behold, tell me there. I have given into thine hand, Sihon, the Amorite, anyone standing before you to hinder at the possession I have given unto you. The king of Heshbon and his land. Begin to possess it. When are you going to begin? Today, today, today. Begin to possess it. Health, begin to possess. Deliverance, begin to possess. Victory, begin to possess. And everything you have been desiring, could I have this? Possess. Can I receive that? Possess. Can I enjoy that one? Possess. Begin to possess it. And contend with him in battle. This day, verse 25, will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven who shall hear the report of thee and they shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. We're coming to Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 1, I have given. Somebody there has received. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Every place. Somebody help me shout every place. Every promise you claim. Every word you receive. Every ground you stand on. Everything you claim tonight. Give me a good amen now. Yeah. Every place, every place, the sole of your foot shall tread upon that, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Do you see that? It's been settled. And it is settled. And it is done. The promise of supernatural conquest. Look at chapter 8, Joshua. Chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the men of war with thee. Arise and go up. Arise and go up. You won't sit in the valley again. The valley of despondency, we're defeated. No, you are not defeated. We have failed. No, we have not failed. That one is of the past. 
that water has gone under the bridge, never to be remembered again. Now is the day, the day of power, the day of conquest, the day of victory, and the day of answered prayer. Today is the day, the day of victory. And so it says, see, that's verse 1, see, I have given into thy hand. You see that? I have given. It's been settled long ago. Now, all that God was telling Joshua now is a renewal of what had been given already. Now, in your case. Now, in my case. Now, in our case, the Lord has given us everything to enjoy, everything to possess, everything to testify about. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. And I'm reading here from verse 23. For there stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. Every obstacle is cleared out of your way. Fear not, my brother, fear not, my sister. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee. Did you hear that? Yeah. Well, I've been reading Old Testament, Old Testament. Now we come to the New Testament, and it is still the same thing. It says, God has given you all that sail with thee. Yeah. Your wife will be part of this blessing. Yeah. Your husband will be part of this blessing. Yeah. Your children are part of this blessing. Anyone you are concerned about, they are part of this one. Look at this, look at this. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be. I believe God that it shall be. Tonight, I believe God that it shall be. That promise, I believe God that it shall be. That healing, I believe God that it shall be. That deliverance, I believe God that it shall be. It shall be even as it was told me. I believe. I said, I believe. I can see the blessing flow into your heart right now. I can see the miracle flow in your way right now. Look at look at Second Peter, Second Peter chapter one, Second Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse three. You have it already. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us. You see that? See, I have given. He has given unto us. He has given unto us. Why should anybody here, I don't know about the people outside there, but anybody inside this place tonight say, hey, what do I have? How can I have? Look at this one. You've got something. Yeah. I said you've got something. Yeah. It says, it says, according as his divine power, he has given, not that he will give, this one is settled. Salvation, settled. Healing, settled. Deliverance, settled. Success, settled. Achievement, settled. Miracle children for the barren, settled. Look at this, look at this. According as his, as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby I given unto us, well, we're just saying us, us every time, whereby I given unto me. Do you have it? Do you possess it? Are you going to enjoy it? Anybody going to shout tonight? Anybody going to testify tonight? Anybody going to possess tonight? Yeah. Whereby you yeah, are giving unto us, unto me. 
exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. As it was with Joshua, as it was with the children of Israel, the promise to you is sure. It was purchased by Christ. He was there on the cross of Calvary. And he shed his blood. And he paid the whole price. Any blessing you need from salvation to glorification. From justification to coronation. And from the beginning to the very end, Jesus Christ has purchased everything. That's why the promise is sure. Not only that, number two. It's been settled in heaven before he came from the foundation of this world. Before he came to this world, he settled it with the Father. Why am I going to the world? Why am I going to die? Why am I going to shed my blood? So that you will help all those descendants of Adam to recover everything they lost in the Garden of Eden. And before he ever came, it was settled in heaven. It was confirmed by the Father. Confirmed by the Father. He, having, re having risen up and is now seated on the right hand of the Father, he has shed this force. He has given us this, which he now see and hear. It was revealed by the Spirit. Revealed by the Spirit. The Father is involved. I have given unto you. Jesus is involved. I have given unto you. The Holy Ghost is involved. I have given unto you. It was announced by angels. It was announced by angels. They announced it. They said, and in fact, they shouted for joy. When Jesus came to this world, all those angels looking ahead as to what you are going to have today. I said, looking ahead as to what you are going to have today, they sang for joy. It was proclaimed by faithful servants of God. And now it's recorded in his holy book. It's recorded for you that it is done. For you, I said, it is done. Yeah. Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 4. We're reading from verse 17. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17, remember Joshua? See, Joshua, I have given unto you. The walls were still there, I have given unto you. The doors were still shut, I have given unto you. It appears nothing was changing. And all the same God said, I have given unto you. What was God trying to educate Joshua about? Look at this in Romans chapter 7. I mean chapter 4. Reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who may believe, even God who quickness the dead. Every part, every cell in your body is quaking tonight. And call it those things which be not as though they were. And call it those things which be not as though they were. Hold on, hold on. Stop for a moment. Because God said, Joshua, see, I have given unto you. See it before you sense it. See it before you sense it. I don't have any feeling in my body yet, but it's done. I can't see anything physical, but it is done. The walls are still standing there, but it is done. See it before you sense it. Believe it before you behold it. Because it's just a matter of minutes from now, you will see it very clearly. You will experience it in your life. As we're going back home and you came in the bus, you came in the, you came in a taxi, you came in your personal car, you cannot resist singing and shouting tonight. Yeah. The singing from this, from this, from this, I have overcome. See, I have overcome. See, I have overcome. Believe it before you behold it. Declare it before you discover it. 
you know, you're still wondering, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Declare it before you discover it. Reckon it done before you realize it. You reckon it, it is done. I said, it is done. I said, it is done. Miracle upon your life. Deliverance upon your life. Reckon it before you realize it. Praise him for it before you possess it. That's why he told them the walls were still standing. He said, shout, shout. Be excited because something is happening to you today. You'll agree with God. I said you'll agree with God. And so you announce it before you achieve it. You announce it before you achieve it because already it is settled in heaven. Already Christ has purchased it for you. Already the Spirit has revealed it tonight. Already the Father has confirmed it. Already the angels have announced it. Already it is written and recorded in God's holy book. Announce it before you achieve it. And then look at that latter part of verse 17. And call us those things which be not as though they were. Count it done before you confirm it done. Count it done before you confirm it done. It's like, uh, you know, while you are sitting down there now, you can begin to count your, your blessings tonight. I said, you can begin to count your blessings tonight. Those blind eyes will open. That with that hand will be stretched out. Those limb legs will walk. That thing swollen your body will, will pack its load and go away. That tormenting spirit will leave you totally tonight. And that problem, that problem you've been trying to conquer, to conquer, to conquer. And, and then you say tonight, praise the Lord, count your blessings, name them one by one. Because tonight, miracles will be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18, look at verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. That it might be, it might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Those dim eyes will become bright tonight. Partial blindness will vanish away tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this. It says, he was not weak in faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And be fully persuaded. Somebody there tonight is fully persuaded. I said somebody there tonight is fully persuaded. I'm persuaded that blessing has come to me. I'm persuaded that healing has come to me. I'm persuaded that my mountain, have gone, my mountain has gone tonight. I'm persuaded that the yoke is broken tonight. I'm persuaded these Jericho walls will fall down tonight. Any persuaded brother there? Any persuaded sister there? It is done. I said it is done. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. It says, be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. There's performance here tonight. Uh, look at number two now. The power of speech control. The power of speech control. Uh, we're looking at Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. And we're reading here from verse 10. Joshua chapter 6. Reading from verse 10. You see, the children of Israel, the majority of them, the older generation, they had had much problem with their tongue rather than with their eyes. Much problems, many problems with their tongue rather than their feet. Much problem, many problems 
with their tongue rather than their hands. And they had the problem of uncontrolled speech that made them, many of them, to lose their health because they began to speak against God and against Moses and serpents came biting them. Many of them were dying. They lost their health. They lost their righteous standing and their security because the protection was taken away from them because of the problem of their tongue. They lost their protection. They lost divine favor. God said, I'm not going to be with them anymore. They're stiff necked They're stubborn. They're self-willed. And they're always talking, blaspheming my name. They lost power and authority. They lost victory over the enemy through their tongue. They lost great privileges. Many of them missed the land flowing with milk and with honey. They were to learn their lesson once and for all. That victory comes as we do not follow the old pattern of using or misusing our tongue. They were to learn the power of silence therapy. It's a therapy. When the speech is controlled, when the tongue is controlled, when the mouth and the lips, when they come under control, it's a therapy. And they were to learn about this silence therapy. Look at this again. In Joshua chapter 6 and verse 10, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth. Why are we going around? No word out of your mouth. Why is it they don't allow us uh, to use uh, axes and digger? No word out of your mouth. Why is it uh, Joshua is making us to go around and nothing is happening? And then we see now a second day and third day, no word out of your mouth. Why is it he doesn't bring all the men and push the wall? Nothing out of your mouth. Silence therapy. They ought to be quiet because it says there'll be no word proceeding out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout then you shall shout. Let me show you the power of speech control. Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 18. In Second Kings chapter 18, we're reading from verse 35. Second Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 35. It says in verse 35, who are they? Among all the gods of the countries, here was a threatening of the enemy that have delivered their country out of my hand and that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. Look at this, verse 36. But the people, what did they do? Held their peace and answered him not a word. Don't answer your enemies. Heaven will answer them. Don't answer your detractors. Heaven will answer them. Don't answer the people that say, we will see the way you will go. And they have been telling you, miracle will happen, that will happen, that will happen. We're going to stand here and we're going to disturb you. If you, if you thought, uh, you know, we are cowards and we are uh, not able to confront you, we are the people disturbing you. And we're going to do it. And they talk to you face to face. Don't answer them. God will answer them. It says they held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, tell me, what did they say? I said, tell me, what did they say? Answer him not. You see, that is the secret of victory. Answer him not. You know, he came bragging. He came condemning. He came boasting. He came saying, I will show you. I will deliver you. I will level you. I will scatter you. I will destroy you. And you think that the people would have said, let somebody talk now. Let somebody reply him now. Did they reply him? No, because it says they answered him not. For the king had said, 
answer him not a word. Let's see what follows. Chapter 19 now. Chapter 19 now. We're looking at verse 14. In chapter 19, verse 14, and Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Spread that letter before the Lord. They are threatening. Spread that letter before the Lord. They are boasting. Spread that letter before the Lord. And all the boasting they are making will destroy you, will finish you, will scatter everything you are looking for. He spread it before the Lord. And that letter, everything will be forgotten. I said everything will be forgotten. And look at, look at verse 31. In verse 31 it says, For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord shall do this. It's the zeal of the Lord that will do it tonight. Now verse 35. And it came to pass, is it coming to pass tonight? In your life, is it coming to pass tonight? In your family, is it coming to pass tonight? And it came to pass that night. Which night? That night. I said, when is your miracle? When is your conquering? It says, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out. And smote the camp of the Assyrians, and hundred, four score, and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, tell me, shout it out. This is your victory. I said, This is your dominion. This is your deliverance. Behold, they were all dead corpses, dead corpses. But watch your mouth, watch your mouth. You know the victory, how they had the victory? Did you see anything? Silence therapy, quietness therapy. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. We're looking at verse 6. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Don't allow your mouth to make you lose the victory, to make you lose your possession, to make you lose the miracle, to make you lose the power of God. It says, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands. Learn the power of speech control. Isaiah chapter 7. In Isaiah chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 4. And say unto him, Take heed and be quiet. Take heed and be quiet. After all, that sickness is moving away tonight. Take heed and be quiet. After all, that mountain is going away tonight. Take heed and be quiet. After all, that problem is having a solution tonight, a supernatural solution tonight in Jesus' name. Take heed and be quiet. After all, all that, barren, all that barrenness is something of the past. Everything is vanishing away tonight. Take heed and be quiet. I am, you know, suffering. Take heed and be quiet. I am bleeding. Take heed and be quiet. I am going through a terrible time. Take heed and be quiet. With that quietness tonight, and with that speech control tonight, the power of God will pass through and sweep through your life. And every good thing that had been ordained for you to have, you will have them tonight in Jesus' name. And say unto him, and say unto him, and say unto her, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted, for the two tails of these smoking fire brands, for the fierce anger of raising the uh, uh, was Syrian, and of the son of Remaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, 
at the son of Remaliah, are taking evil counsel against the sinner. Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a bridge therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tebel. Thus says the Lord, it shall not stand. Thus says the Lord, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. What your enemies are saying, it shall not stand. All those conspiracies, it shall not stand. They will destroy him, it shall not stand. They come in the dream, it shall not stand. He must die this year. It shall not stand. You know, they bring a prophecy from white garment and prophecy from black garment and prophecy from red garment and prophecy from incense and prophecy from the bond red candle, yellow candle, white candle, and they come and they say, did you hear? Uh, your church, we know that you don't think about prophecy, but you know, be careful. This one, they said that this year, and they said, you will die through that thing away. It shall not stand. But understand the power of speech control. That shall not talk. You don't need to reply them because that thing will not stand. I said that thing will not stand. You have the victory already. I have the victory. Uh, look, look at chapter 30, chapter 30 of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 30, and I'm reading from verse 15, Isaiah chapter 30, and we're looking at verse 15, in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, it says, for thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and confidence. In quietness and confidence, in quietness and confidence, shall be your strength. And he would not. He was talking to those people. He told them, be quiet, be quiet. And they would not. And therefore, they lost their victory. You will not lose your victory. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 30. And we're looking at a verse 10. In Jeremiah chapter 30, reading from verse 10. Therefore, fear thou not. You have lost your amen. Therefore, therefore, fear thou not. O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, neither be dismayed. O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar. And I siege from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet. And be quiet. Uh, can you think of, you know, all the words we speak? The words of doubt, be quiet. The words of unbelief, be quiet. The words of wavering up and down, be quiet. The word of tiredness, I'm tired. I don't know whether I can go on again. This is too much for me. Be quiet. Your miracle is on the way. Don't drive your miracle away by the words of unbelief, by the words of doubting, and by the words of tiredness. It says, be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all the nations whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and uh, will not leave thee altogether unpunished. And then it goes on to say in verse 12, For thus says the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wounds grievous, and there is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound, bound up. Thou hast no 
healing medicine. But keep quiet, keep quiet. Don't cry. Don't complain. Don't go around saying, I'm unfortunate. No, you are not unfortunate. Because this is your day. I said, this is your day. If you will be quiet and you understand the power of speech control, look at verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Ah, that's a place to have a good amen. That's a place to celebrate with hallelujah. Verse 17, for I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds. I will heal thee of thy wounds. Says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Look at verse 19. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. I will glorify them. They shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime. Their congregation shall be established before me. I will punish all that oppress them. Their nobles of themselves, their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. I will cause him to draw near. He shall approach unto me. For who is this that is a, that engaged the sad to approach unto me, says the Lord, and ye shall be my people. Are they there tonight? People of God, are they there tonight? The conquerors, are they there tonight? Ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Chapter 31, chapter 31, chapter 31. I'm reading here from verse 11. Chapter 31, I'm looking at verse 11. Chapter 31, are you there now? I said, are you there now? Why don't you read this? This one is for you. I said, this one is for you. When you find a name there, put your name there. One, two, three, go. I, if you don't, I, I, I will put my name, I will put my name for the Lord has redeemed and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Praise the Lord. You got it tonight. I said you got it tonight. I said you got it tonight. Before I go on, before I go on, read that again and put your name there, verse 11. It is confirmed in heaven in Jesus' name. Tonight is your night. The night of your victory. The night of your healing. The night when all those Jericho walls will fall down from your life. We're coming to point number three now. The praise of shouting conquerors. The praise of shouting conquerors. We're coming to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 16. Joshua chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Celebrate. Sing. Praise the Lord. The Lord has given the miracle to you tonight. Look at verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass, it must come to pass. When the people had the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. When they shouted that your wall fell down flat. 
When they shouted that your problem fell down flat. When they shouted that your calamities fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man, every man going home today with joy. Every man going home today with a miracle. Every man going home today was singing. Every man stretched before him. And he took the city. I take my blessing. I take my miracle. I take my healing. I take my deliverance. I take my breakthrough. Numbers, Numbers chapter 23. In Numbers chapter 23... I'm reading from verse 19. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoke it, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I've received a commandment to bless. And he has blessed. And he has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. And he has blessed. And Balaam cannot reverse it. And he has blessed. And a false prophet cannot reverse it. And he has blessed. And the man on your street cannot reverse it. Verse 21, verse 21, here is your verse. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God, is with him. Where is he? The Lord is with you. The goodness of God is with you. Look at this, look at this. And the shout, and the shout, and the shout of a king is among them. Verse 23, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to the time, according to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel what God has done. You are getting ready to shout. For Samuel chapter 17. For Samuel chapter 17. Reading from verse 52. The men of Israel and of Judah arose and they shouted. Because Goliath has fallen. Goliath is dead. The bragging Goliath is gone. The terrorizing Goliath is down. And so the men of Israel and the men of Judah arose and they shouted and they pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley, to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Zaharim, even unto Gath. Unto Gath and unto Ekron, they will fall before you. Second Chronicles, chapter 13. Second Chronicles, chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 14. The celebration here tonight. The shouting here tonight. There's giving the glory to God here tonight. Uh, look at Second Chronicles, chapter 13. Reading from verse 14. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind. And he cried unto the Lord. And the priest sounded with the trumpet. And then the men of Judah gave, what? A shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. With a shout of praise, enemies are defeated. 
With the shout of praise, enemies are conquered. With the shout of praise, your blessings will arrive. Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3. In Zephaniah chapter 3, we're reading from verse 14. Zephaniah chapter 3, we're reading from verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Anybody knows how to sing there? Tonight you'll know how to sing. It will come out of your heart. When the miracles begin to flow, when the power strikes you and rolls all the problems away and those walls come down, there must be singing, shouting tonight. In verse 14, sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord has taken away thy judgments. He has cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord, the Lord, he says, the king of Israel is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In your house, you'll not see evil anymore. In your place of work, you'll not see evil anymore. And it says, in that day, in that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. Let not thy hands be weak. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee and is mighty. He will say, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee and to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. And I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time, will I bring you again. Even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name. I will make you a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity, before your eyes says the Lord. Are you getting ready? Jericho walls will fall down. All the barriers will be broken down. It was a shout of faith. When Joshua said, shout, it wasn't like, okay, what are we shouting about? Look at the walls there. What are we shouting about? Look at the gates they shut. What are we sh uh, shouting about? Look at the problems. Uh-uh, uh-uh. It's not what you see. It had been registered in heaven that those walls, in a few minutes now, they are coming down. And so they shouted. It was a shout of faith. It was a shout of assurance. It was a shout of absolute trust in God. They trusted in the Lord. They believed in the Lord absolutely. And the walls came down. It was a shout of unshakable confidence. Unshakable confidence in the Lord. They knew, they knew, as long as God is faithful in heaven and we give a shout tonight, those walls must come down, they will come down from your life. It was a shout of accepted dominion, accepted dominion. The dominion is ours, the victory is ours. And the promises they are fulfilled for your life in your life here tonight in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 4, Second Corinthians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We're looking at verse 13. It says, We having the same spirit of faith. What does that mean? It's talking about look at Joshua. He believed in the Lord. Look at the children of Israel. They believed in the Lord. And when Joshua said, those walls are coming down, 
the belief. And as I tell you tonight, the walls in your life, they are coming down in Jesus' name. And we having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. I believe, therefore have I spoken. Those children of Israel, they believed, therefore they were shouting. And tonight, I believe. Therefore, am I shouting? I can't hear you. I believe. Therefore, am I shouting? I believe. Therefore, am I rejoicing? Look at, look at Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas, it was midnight. And then, as they thought of what to do, the bands were still there, their legs were still in the stalls, and the prison, the doors were closed. Everything was dark, and they began to pray and to praise the Lord and to rejoice and to sing. And all those foundations of the prison, everything collapsed, and all the doors were open, and they were set free. You are free tonight. They believe, so they were rejoicing. I believe. Therefore, am I rejoicing? Do you remember Anna? Anna was weeping and crying. And then she was saying some things that Eli did not hear. And Eli said, take away your drunkenness. What's happening to you? He said, I'm not drunk, but I'm sorrowful. And this is my problem. And Eli said, you have your request. I said, you have your request. Tonight, you have your request. Tonight, you have your prayers answered. And then it says, the Bible says, and Anna was no more sad. Anna was no more sad. Sadness is gone. Sorrow of heart is gone. I believe. Therefore, am I cheerful? As you believe tonight and you are cheerful, and you know that all those problems are gone. They are gone in Jesus' name. You know, there was this man by the, by the river. And Jesus said, will you be made whole? And then began to complain, I'd have no man when the water is trouble uh, to take me and then to put me inside. And while I am coming, I'm stepping out. Then somebody goes before me and I lose my healing. Tonight, nobody is going to lose his healing. Yeah. And then Jesus said, Rise up and take thy bed and walk. And power came immediately. That power is coming to you today. He stepped out. I believe. Let the Lord hear you. I believe. Let the heavens hear you. I believe. Therefore, am I stepping out? Therefore, am I stepping out? There's a man that had withered hand, withered hand, and he could not leave the hand. It was just hanging like that. And Jesus said, stretch forth thy hand. Stretch forth thy hand. The man did not say, why well, can I stretch forth my hand? I've not used that hand for many, many years. But I believe. Therefore, I stretch out the hand. I said, I believe. Therefore, I stretch out the hand. And power will come to that hand in Jesus' name. Hey, look at Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. I'm reading to you from verse 19. Isaiah chapter 65. I will read him from verse 19. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter, tell me the chapter I'm looking for. Chapter 65. I was looking at verse 19. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem. And joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. I believe. Therefore, I stop crying. I believe. Therefore, I stop crying. Hey, look, at, look at verse 24. Verse 24, and it shall come to pass. When? And it shall come to pass that before they call, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The Lord is going to hear tonight. I believe. I believe. 
Therefore, I stop crying. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 7. Acts chapter 14, verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same had Paul speak, like you have heard tonight, who steadfastly beholding him perceived that he had faith to be healed. I have faith to be healed. I have faith to be delivered. I have faith to receive blessing. And said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he lived and walked. I believe, therefore am I standing. I said I believe, therefore am I standing. You'll stand on your problem. You'll stand on that mountain. You'll stand on that curse. You'll stand on that sorrow. You'll stand on all those evil powers. Tonight I believe. I believe, therefore, am I spoken. I believe, therefore, am I rejoicing. I believe, therefore, am I cheerful. I believe, therefore, I stop crying. I believe, therefore, I am cheerful. I believe, therefore, I stretch out that hand. I believe tonight, therefore, am I standing. Somebody there is 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 standing. Stand on that problem. Stand on that problem. Stand on that problem. And tell the Lord now. And tell the Lord now. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. This is my night. I believe. I believe. It's a night of miracle. I believe. It's a night of power. I believe. It's a night of authority. I believe. It's the night of breakthrough. I believe. It's not. It's not. The promise is sure. The promise was settled in heaven. Promise of salvation, settled. Promise of healing, settled. The promise of deliverance, settled. The promise of every yoke broken, settled. The promise of provision, settled. Promise of success, settled. Promise of achievement, settled. Promise of progress and provision and promotion, settled. I believe. I believe. Therefore, am I shouting? I believe. Therefore, am I singing? I believe. Therefore, am I rejoicing? I believe. Therefore, am I cheerful? I believe. Therefore, am I stepping out? I believe. Therefore, am I stretching that with that leg, with that hand? I believe. I believe. Therefore, I receive. I possess. I believe. Therefore, am I standing? The promise of supernatural conquest. I have given it to you. Salvation, I've given it to you. Forgiveness, I've given it to you. Power, I've given it to you. Victory, I've given it to you. The promise of supernatural conquest. Or supernatural possession. I've given it to you. The promise is sure. Purchased by Christ. Purchased by Christ. Purchased by Christ. It's already yours. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's already yours. Salvation. Yours for the asking. Healing. Yours for the asking. Deliverance. Yours for the asking. Dominion. Yours for the asking. 
confidence yours for the asking victory yours for the asking ask it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock it shall be opened unto you tonight is the night of victory it's a night of conquest it's a night of possession it's a night of those walls coming down every hindrance taken away every mountain removed every incurable disease healed every bondage broken I have given I have given I've given it unto you possess 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 a life of victory a life of healing a life of health a life of dominion a life of authority a life of dominion that breaks every yoke a life of breakthrough those walls are coming down one by one those walls are coming down and the foundation of every prison shaking believe I believe therefore am I shouting I believe therefore am I rejoicing I believe therefore am I praising the Lord I believe therefore have I stopped crying I believe therefore am I testifying I believe See, I've given it to you. See, I have given it to you. You are a possessor tonight. You are a possessor tonight. You are a possessor tonight. And remember, after this prayer session, speech control. You say nothing negative, speech control. You say nothing of doubt, speech control. You say nothing of depression, speech control. You say nothing of unbelief, speech control. You say nothing of complaining about an enemy, speech control. The power of speech control. Negative words are gone. Doubting words are gone. Complaining words are gone. Murmuring words are gone. Words of regret, all gone. Words of unbelief, all gone. Speech control. Speech control. See it before you sense it. It's there. Miracle. Salvation. Joy of salvation. Healing. Deliverance. Dominion. See it before you sense it. Believe it before you behold it. It's there. God cannot lie. It's there. The promise cannot fail. It's there. 
the miracle must come. It's there. Believe it before you behold it. Declare it before you discover it. It's there. It's there. The heavens are open. It's there. The gates are open. It's there. The walls are falling. The miracle is there. Declare it before you discover it. Reckon it done. Reckon it done. Reckon it done. Reckon it before you realize it. Our God cannot fail. Heaven cannot fail. Calvary cannot fail. The blood of Jesus cannot fail. Reckon it before you realize it. Praise him for it. Praise him for it. Praise him for it before you possess it. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Announce it before you achieve it. Announce it. Let the world hear. Let your household hear. Things are different from tonight. Count it down. 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 Before you confirm it. It's done. It cannot be otherwise. It's done. It cannot fail. It's done. The Jericho walls are down. It's done. The miracle is right there. It's done. The gates are wide open. It's done. Get ready to shout. Get ready to sing. Get ready to celebrate. Get ready to glorify the Lord. Get ready to praise Him. Count it down. In Jesus' name we pray. I believe. Therefore, am I shouting? I believe. Therefore, am I rejoicing? I believe. Therefore, am I cheerful? I believe. 
Therefore, am I stepping out? I believe. Therefore, I stop crying. I believe. Therefore, I stretch out my hand. I believe. Therefore, am I standing? I believe. Therefore, am I moving forward? I believe. Therefore, am I possessing? I believe. I believe. I believe. Therefore, I give a testimony. Raise up those signs. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you because the Jericho walls are falling down. The enemy is falling. Babylon is falling. Powers of darkness are falling. All those seeds that came against any of the children of God here, they are falling in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the gates of heaven will open. Blessings flow down. Miracles flow down. Salvation flow down. Power flow down. Anointing flow down. And let your power flow into every life now in Jesus' name. Lord, those who have asked you for forgiveness, forgive them right now. For salvation, save them right now. For power, give them the power right now. Lord, I pray every sickness there, come out in Jesus' name. Every attack in your head, every affliction in your body, every swelling that is there, every pain that is there, Every cause in your life, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. The hand of the enemy in your life, the hand of, oppress, of oppression in your life, and the cause and the yoke in your life, be broken right now. Be destroyed right now. Impossibilities become possible. Your night turn to day. Your weakness turn to strength. Your sorrows turn to joy. You stop crying. You stop crying. You stop crying. You start rejoicing. You start shouting. Lord, victory in every life. Miracle in every life. Success in every life. Achievement in every life. Conquering in every life. Power in every life. To my right, miracle. In my front, miracle. To my left, miracle. At the ground level, miracle. At the gallery, miracle. Everywhere, miracle. Receive. 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 Lord, confirm each in every life. I thank you because I know it's done. I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. A shout of joy. A shout of celebration. A shout of answered prayer. A shout of all the walls coming down. Joy. 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 Celebration. As you go, you see what God has done. 